Morning, everybody. Let me do a quick watch video before I go shower up and go riding with my homeboys. So, uh, what are we getting now? I'm still waiting on one more. Um, it's a it's an homage to a Tag Heuer Aqua Racer. But I saw these. It's got a strange name. It's from a company called Tactical Frog. Read into it, whatever you want. But they actually seem to be pretty well-regarded watches that are using proper uh, Seiko movements again. And that's the biggest thing about a watch. I mean, well, maybe not the biggest thing. No, it might be the biggest thing. It's not the only important thing. You know, it's got to hold up. It's got to be finished well. It has to be reasonably waterproof and all that. But, you know, all those things are pointless if it doesn't keep decent time and it doesn't last, right? So... I tend to go for the homage watches that seem to have a really good reputation um, and that have, you know, a, a quality Seiko, you know, movement. It's got a good Japanese quartz movement. So I got this one, which comes in this little case. Nothing crazy. I mean, it made, makes it look like it's, oh, it's waterproof, and it's not. It's not like a Pelican case, but, hey, it's better than the normal piece of crappy cardboard you get with uh, uh, Timex or something that's, you know, pretty much falling apart. And what this is, is a military style watch, similar to, I'll bring it out in a minute, my uh, Bertucci. So let's see what we've got. we got some instructions. We have international guarantee. That is the sign of uh, quality and, and confidence. So, hey, but it's got a two-year warranty. All right, so I can go ahead and fill that out and... Do whatever I'm going to do with it. It just came wrapped in some bubble wrap and stuff to protect it. There was a plastic film. Um, when I prepared for the video, I took that off just to make sure there was, you know, everything was in working order and set the time. And then it comes with uh, some instructions. So there's a couple different versions of these. We'll go through the specs in a moment. Um, but it's pretty simple operation. What's that to say? So there's a couple different variations. And some of them have the NATO style straps like my Bertucci. Um, I kind of prefer this. The strap is actually seems pretty damn nice. It's leather on the back. It says nylon, but it, it, it feels almost like a canvas. So it might be nylon, might be the actual strands, but it's done like a canvas. It's a nice uh, subtle color. I think that goes well with the watch and, and the, the coloring on the watch face. We'll go into greater detail. Um, it is leather-ish or something on the back. It's stitched, and then the holes are reinforced with leather. So feels pretty good. Um, it's a nice matte uh, kind of bead blast finish on the watch and on the clasp. No branding on the clasp, minimal branding on the watch. Um, they have some that don't have any branding. There's some that have a date there. I actually didn't care for the date. I just wanted this particular one. Specs. It's got a VK67 quartz movement. That's a Seiko. Um, it's a 316L stainless steel. And it's got a bead blast with an anti-fingerprint coating. Which, yeah, seems to yeah, seems to work all right, I guess. Um, it's got some Lumi in there. And I believe it uses two colors. Or maybe certain variations do. Maybe I didn't get the one. No, the, the, the numbers are actually, a they're not glowing as bright, but they appear to have a bluish kind of dimmer loomy. So that's actually kind of cool. And green, I don't know how long it'll last, whatever. I'm not, you know, I'm not, some people are like, oh, it's got to last all night for me. It just doesn't matter that much. Um, you've got screw down crown and... The chronograph, start and stop and reset, are also screw downs. Those contribute to the 100 meter uh, water resistance, so 10 atmospheres. Very minimal branding on the back. It just says Militado with their little eagle thing, bird, pigeon, chicken, whatever that is. Um, it is a 37, uh, sorry, 39 millimeter. Um, and then it is uh, out to the crown, takes it out to 42.7, lug to lug is 46 and a half and it's a nice pretty thin uh 12.3 uses uh 20 uh, millimeter uh straps um these are the quick disconnect type which i do appreciate not having to sit and dick around with uh with a tool to to get those to uh remove they seem to remove quite easily because i just inadvertently pushed that button well not inadvertently i pushed it and let it slip out of place 
Um, they fit in there nice and snug so it doesn't creak or move around, you know, a lot. On the wrist, let's take a look. The band is a little stiff out of the box, but like anything, leather's always like that. Um, it'll take probably a little bit to loosen up. I will say, um, there we go. Yeah, it's really stiff. <laughs> it's not uncomfortable. The underside is actually quite soft, but it's going to take a little while for that, that fabric to kind of loosen up. But there it is on the wrist. It's very nice. Let's go ahead and unscrew the crowns. One of the reasons I didn't get the date on there was because, you know, at the end of the month, I got to go reset all my watches <laughs> for the date, depending on how many months, or how many days are in the month. So I can go ahead and start. We got our stopwatch up here and then, you know, our seconds counting on the big second hand and then minutes we will be counting on that top uh, complication. And down here is the seconds for the regular time. I can stop. And then like a mechanical watch, instead of a sweep, it just snaps back. So it's very kind of similar to like an actual mechanical wine style watch. I like what Seiko did where they, they have the quartz movement. Yeah, that really is a stiff band. Some people might not like the band out of the box, but stick with it, soften it up, just wear it. It'll, uh, it'll loosen up over time. But it is very thick. So when it's that stiff and thick, giggity, um, especially when you got that extra adding, uh, extra layer there, makes that really thick. So you will find it's not going to just slip on and slip off, you know, quite as easily as some other bands. I have read that over time, they just tend to get loose and flop a little bit more and, and, you know, that's what happens. You, you know, when it's, when it's a brand new strap, it's very stiff and hard. And as time gets on, it gets older, you know, not quite so much. Um, it's a nice looking watch. I, I wouldn't mind it being a little bit bigger. Let's do a size comparison to some of the others. And actually, I got to take one out to make room for this one. So we're going to get rid of this cheap one. It's a nice, you know, looking watch, but it is a $35 Olevs, so that one comes out to make room for a nicer watch. These go for about 117 so not really expensive, but they're not super cheap. I believe it is a Chinese company, but they, they're using Japanese quartz, you know, movements from Seiko, so that's pretty cool. They're saying it is, um, I think they're saying it's sapphire glass, sapphire glass with anti-reflective coating. So for 115, 116 bucks, I think they go from like 108 to 120, depending on which version. If you want the NATO strap or different colors, some have the date there where it says Militado. Um, I think it's a nice looking watch. It's actually really pretty. I love the bead blast finish. The finish is actually quite nice. It's very consistent. There's no hard edges. Everything seems to have a very slight chamfer on it. So. The buttons here are good and tactile. The crown, the, the crown is is screw down, and it is, um, it gets some good grip. Some of them, you know, it's like it, it, they're slick, and so your your hand is like actually slipping when you're trying to use it. But it's got a nice, nice, nice feel to it. Wouldn't mind it being a little bitter, bigger. This is the larger, uh, uh, the largest one that they have. Um, I would love it if it was more in line with like one of these, like a 42 to a 44 is kind of like the sweet spot just for my wrists. But if you want a nice cash watch um, that's, you know, reasonably water resistant and has a basic chronograph and should be a good, reliable uh, timepiece, you know, for just bopping around or camping or whatever it is you do in the outdoors. You know, some people would say, well, if you can really be outdoors and doing anything hardcore, you know, get the G-Shocks. And I agree. I think the G-Shocks are really built for that ultimate sporting watch and you certainly have more water resistance but anything from a quick dunk in the lake to taking a shower or sitting in a hot tub you should be fine with 100 meter, meter water resistance i would say if you're going to go jet skiing or if you're going to be doing any kind of scuba or anything else go to the 200 right you're going to want that one or that one or that one for sure any of the g-shocks they say 200 but most of them test quite a bit higher than that so i think for ultimate uh you know water and, and stuff like that um especially if you're going to go any kind of deeper water or impact of water there's really these things are just so well armored that there's not really a good way for water to get into them they seem to be pretty much bulletproof 
but that's nice. I like the minimal. I, I do wish they would put the battery type on the back, but I guess knowing that it, it's a VK67, I could look that up and you know figure out what battery it has without taking it apart. But it's nice and clean. Um, looking at it against the Bertucci, they're about the same size, although this one looks a little bigger, I think just because of the extra metal around the lug area. But dial size, they really are just about the same. This one might be a 40. Maybe that's a 40, and this is a 39. So it would be a tiny bit smaller. But this uses your, your um, NATO style band, and this uses the canvas. I actually kind of like the canvas. Like I said, other than the stiffness of it, at first, getting it on and off, you know, I just have to, gonna have to wear it for a little bit and, and get some, uh, whatchamacallit going, get a little bit of flex going in there. But it, it's very soft. That's what's nice about it. So, um, what is it to say, really? It's just a nice little watch. They've done a really, really good job of all those bevels. I like the fact that it's a nice band. It's got the smooth, very plush leather backing. I like that everything's screw down. Um, a, this helps with the water, uh, the water uh, resistance, but also it keeps it from um, accidentally hitting uh, the stopwatch when you don't want to. And then it's running the stopwatch and the watch, and it just you know it can wear your battery down faster, get a little bit of longevity. Um, the only other watch I have that's a chronograph that has the screw down bezels is actually my Citizen um, Dive Master Pro or whatever the hell this thing is. It's a big, fairly heavy, chunky watch, but man, I love it. It's a beautiful watch. Um, you know, that one's got the screw down bezels as well, but I'm not seeing any manufacturing defects. I'm not seeing any imperfections on the dial. The dial is very crystal clear. The glass is clear. It's got a slight dome to it. So it won't be as protected as something that sits, you know, recessed. So if you lay it down on the table, uh, face up or face down, you are resting on the on the crystal. But it is sapphire, so it should uh, uh, it should uh, resist most abrasions unless you're being a complete muppet with it. But um, yeah, I like it. I'm, I'm looking for something that I don't like. It seems well put together. They've got great reviews. The name's kind of gay, Tactical Frog. I don't know what the hell that's supposed to mean, but it's a very pretty watch. I might wear that today. I don't know what I'm going to wear today. The biggest question is when I get the new watch, which is a uh, it's a, P a Pagani design homage to a Aqua Racer from Tog Heuer, i got to make room in here. One of these is going to have to come out and go outside of the case. I'm guessing it's going to have to be probably the cheapest watch here, which will be the Casio. This is actually a great, fantastic watch, but we'll just put that off to the side. It won't go in the display case, although I think it's actually a good-looking watch. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll take out the Invicta. The Invicta is a nice watch. I'd give this away, but it's already sized to my wrist. Um but it is a little gaudy. I should have gotten it without the gold. I, I, it, to me, with the blue gold and the silver, it looks like it's trying a little hard. And so that one I just don't tend to wear as much, even though it's a great little watch. But we'll see. We'll see which one makes its way in here. So I'm going to go take a shower, and I'm going to go ride my bicycle. Vroom, vroom type, not regular bike. Actually, I'm going to wear this one today. I want to break in the straps, so that's what we're going to do. But that is the... Militado. There's another brand that's very similar to these. It begins with a B, by Terry, by I don't know, something like that, um, that is about $20 more. They're up around the 150 range. And I'm not sure what the real difference is. I think they just, maybe something on the dial, just it's minimal. The Lumi, I think, was supposed to be a little bit better. But uh, yeah, looks good. It's a nice looking watch. I'm going to wear that today. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on and Go take a shower, see if that softens it up, some hot water, get it to shape to my wrist a little bit. And then we're gonna go ride. And I'd say, yes, that's a little too, a little too tight, yeah. We'll have to find the right setting for the tension on here for my wrist. So rather than you watch me dick around trying to get my watch band on and off, yeah, I put it on one, one too tight. There we go. 
um, I will leave you to your day. So I'll put the uh, link in the comments uh, in the uh, description, but that's a nice little watch. So that's what we're wearing today. That is the Militato. It's only a few bucks cheaper than the Bertucci, and they are very similar. Um, this one is lighter. Um, this one has a different style band on it. Um, this one has 200 meter water resistance. That was the reason I got this one. So this one's gonna be, and it's also titanium instead of stainless steel. So even better corrosion resistance, lighter, tougher. Um, the the cram the uh, the glass is slightly recessed. So you know, if I had to say was one bot watch better than the other, I don't know. This one's definitely a little. The band's certainly softer although it looks a little cheaper, but it's actually a nice serviceable band. I don't know if I had to pick between the two. That's a tough call. Would I go with the Bertucci or would I go with the Militado? I think I'd go with the Bertucci only because it's bigger. And they do have larger versions of this. And I may get one at some point because this one also is just a little bit small on my wrist. So at some point I may go ahead and, and get the 44 or 45 mil in titanium if they've got it, which could be cool. But... You know, if you didn't like this style, which is kind of a weird shape, but the crown down here, and this one doesn't have a chronograph, it has a date instead. If you didn't want that, you wanted more of a round style field watch, like the Timex Explorer series, or Expeditions, I think it is, but you didn't want a Timex, you wanted something just a little different, um, I would go for that. I think that's a good choice. So, Either way, folks, we'll see y'all later.